welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to have you with us today. And if you're brand new, welcome, double, triple, quadruple welcome. And you regular viewers, how, how much we love you. I've already got my guests here. And that's David and Sherry Orcutt. And they are, I think you could use the word disciples of my good friend, Dr. George Malcolmus. You know what he looks like. We have a picture of him for you, and he's been on this program for the last 10 years. There he is, that great smile and sparkly blue eyes. And he, of course, is the founder of Hallelujah Acres. And my new best friends here, the Orcuts, they have a Hallelujah Acres Center in Plant City, Florida. Welcome, welcome. Well, thank you very much. His thank message you. is spreading, isn't it? It is. It is. I remember the first time he came here, um, what an impression he made on the viewers and so he usually comes by about once once a year mm -hmm. here and we consider him a regular and, and in fact if you've never heard of uh, Dr. George Malcolmus and Hallelujah Acres very quickly his story was when he was uh, probably 30 years ago at least maybe a little more was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer with a tumor the size of a baseball and his mother had just died of colon cancer and he saw what the treatment did to her and he said I don't want to do that and he called up a radio preacher who I happen to remember I never met him but his name was Lester Roloff and uh, Reverend Roloff said uh, do what the Bible says Genesis 129 um, you eat the things that God has growing out of the dirt and Dr. Malcolmus did that and he drank a lot of carrot juice took a lot of barley max both of which I a strong proponent mm -hmm. and uh, within a year that cancer was gone and from that was born a ministry that is really that's kind of it in a nutshell isn't it that's right yes. and what, what a delightful gentleman now uh, we have some testimonies here that'll blow you away but uh, let's let's go back to the beginning how did you ever hear about hallelujah acres well when um when David was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2001, uh, he was in the hospital. He was laying there and he said, if the Lord wants to take me home, it's okay, I'm ready to go. And I was shocked. I was like, you're too young, you're 50 years old, what do you mean you're ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I started to pray as he was having eight hours of testing. And uh, the Lord gave me Psalm 41.3 that said, I will raise him from his bed of illness. And you know, Arthelene, I just believed it. I just, I believed it. I said, all right, Lord, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm ready for it, right? Mm -hmm. So we left the hospital, and three days later, uh, I had put out some emails and family requests and things, and I was on staff at a local church, and so there was major prayer going up. And uh, three days later, the Hallelujah Lifestyle came at us from every direction. <laughs> uh, the, now, the really interesting thing about that is everyone who told us that's what we should do, none of them were doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> we, um, we read the material. We, we read for, uh, Why Christians Get Sick, and then we read uh, God's Way to Ultimate Health. And when we read this, it made sense to us that the living body has living cells, and it needs living food. It makes all kinds of sense. It does. Uh, I had a minister friend who put it this way. You're made out of dirt, so you need to eat the things that come out of the dirt. That's there right. <laughs> uh, now, David, um, how, did you, how did your MS manifest itself? Um, the first symptoms that I had from the MS were, were numbness down my left side and loss of use of my right leg. Okay. Was that immediate or did it come on? It came on within slowly. one week's time. Really, one week? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I was away from home. Uh, I was working away from the house. And um, it happened repeatedly throughout the week. And when we came home, I w we ended up going to the doctor. Yeah, typically, you know, expecting to either go home with a drug or something. Get it to, fixed, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the quick fix to, to go home with. Um, did, the, did the message of... of Dr. Malcolmus, you know, did that ring true right away? I noticed that you, I think in uh, what I read on your website was that you prayed for guidance and wisdom. Uh -huh. Did you throw in a prayer for healing first? No. Really? No. Well, that's the first thing I do. I bang I find, on the door of heaven and say, I want. I know, and I find that really funny that I didn't, mm -hmm. but I prayed for wisdom. And 
and uh, the Lord, I really feel the Lord just brought it forth and uh, I'm a skeptic. Uh, I really researched this for about six weeks before we did it and I just believed uh, what I read and, and what I saw on the internet and everything and we jumped in with both feet. We decided not to compromise and just do it and I believed the verse the Lord gave me in the hospital. Well, when you said you prayed for wisdom, there's a good precedent there because yes, there uh, <laughs> uh, King Solomon, if you remember, in the uh -huh. scripture, he was a teenager. He was very young. Right. And, and God basically said to him in a dream, I'm giving you a blank check. Now, when I was a teenager, if God gave me a blank <laughs> check, it probably would have been a red sports car in <laughs> a closet full of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that young man said, uh, ask for wisdom. Mm -hmm. That, you know, there, God must have dropped that in your heart because that's not natural. I believe that. I believe that because too. Because anybody would have prayed for healing or a cure first, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't know why I did that. But. What's it like, David, to get that diagnosis? I, I would think that would speak terror to your soul. It does, and especially if you, if you understand at all what, what MS is. Um, you know, the doctor gave us a prognosis, you know, that we were going to, uh, Sherry asked him, uh, what was going to happen when, when uh, if I went on these drugs that he told me I was going to go on, which we didn't want to do, and we were told that even though I was on the drugs, I was going to go downhill, uh, I was going to start losing different functions in my body, and eventually it would take my life. Uh -huh. And the... Um no telling, you know, what, what the drugs would have done. Now, let's explain a little bit of Dr. Malcolm's, his um, MO, really. And that is 85% raw foods, which right. come out of the ground with all the good nutrients, and 15% cooked. Yes. Do you all kind of follow that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And, and I've become pretty good at preparing these kind of foods and I think at our center what's really surprising to people is that uh, they're, they're frightened of the, what the food's going to look like mm -hmm. and when they mm -hmm. see spaghetti and rice balls or raviolis mm -hmm. which is uh, two tomatoes with a macadamia and pine nut cheese you know they get they get to see how we make the cheese we make it out of macadamia nuts yeah, well, so we that don't sounds use good. the animal cheese yeah, so there's no dairy product yeah well, let's put that website <laughs> up because these people have a center in Plant City, Florida, and it's really a, a God thing, the way it all mm -hmm. happened, and if you have some serious health problems, you might want to learn more about this. I'll tell you what we're going to do. There's a website there with, uh, you'll find a lot of information. However, if you do not have a computer, and I know that uh, some of you do not, uh, we're going to offer you the book, Why Christians Get Sick, by Dr. George Malcolmus. And uh, if you want to use your credit card, you call 1-800-229-0059. And uh, you can use that, or you could write to us at Homekeepers, Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, that gift of at least $20 plus uh, the $3 shipping, we will get it to you. It'll really give you an understanding of his ministry in this small book. And I'll tell you what we will add to it. And that's information on the Lifestyle Center, the Hallelujah Acres Lifestyle Center, which these people uh, run in Plant City, Florida. And I've seen pictures. You have a beautiful facility. Thank you. It's beautiful. It's uh, 5,000 square feet. It sits, sits on six and a quarter acres and overlooks um, some horses in the pasture. And, and um, people come from all over the world to visit us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of run like a bed and breakfast for health. And people stay for five or 12 days. Um, and this has all that information. And we'll put that in the book when you, when you order it so you'll know what's going on in Florida. The other Hallelujah Acres is, is located in, um, in North Carolina. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but these, this is what's wrong with these people before they... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that is uh, just discouraging, Quite the list. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've already talked about your uh, multiple sclerosis, which is really what got your attention. It did. Uh, <clears throat> arthritis, skin cancers. You lost 50 pounds. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, no body odor. That would be good. <laughs> uh, headache, uh, fungus, uh, joint pain, acid reflux, 
uh, you stopped snoring. Amen. 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 Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you had a lump in your chest, and your hair's growing. You have very nice hair. Thank you. Do you have more now than when you started yes, this? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so all this came from this diet, this new lifestyle, and it didn't cost you a penny at the prescription counter. I'll tell you, it's amazing. The, uh, Whoa. You know, Sherry, Sherry did the taxes, <clears throat> excuse me, back when uh, we first started. And, you know, typically you have to go back three years for some of the stuff. And uh, big dollars in, in medical mm -hmm, bills mm -hmm. and prescriptions and everything. And um, uh, after that, it was zero across the board. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, not only the cost of the prescriptions, but the um, uh, missing time at work and uh, just all these things we normally worry about, mm -hmm. we're gone. I don't think I have any medical to claim. And I praise God, just dental yeah. stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, here's Sherry's. Uh, you were taking blood pressure and thyroid medicine? Yes, ma'am. I wonder how many people are on that. Many. There are millions mm -hmm. yes. uh, who have those two. Uh, no allergies. You lost 70 pounds. Uh -huh. uh, increase in energy. Hands and face, skin are better. Your dandruff is gone. Um, you had annual, <laughs> annual bronchitis and pneumonia. <laughs> Just put it on the calendar. She was going to have it this year. It was yeah. every year, yeah. faithfully. And then two weeks into the lifestyle, uh, all the symptoms went away. That was the fourth year in a row. And um, uh, Bladder problems, yeah. acid reflux. Uh, your fingernails grew back. Mm -hmm. strong. These are, are those my, real? These are my own. <laughs> Mine are false. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Save me some money if I get on this one. It does. It? You had bleeding gums, yes. guns, and a bunion left? Yeah, the bunion, it was, it's interesting how that happened because we hosted Reverend Malkmus to come speak one time at the church I was on staff mm -hmm. at. And it had been a year. And I had to buy two different size shoes. And um, you know how Reverend Malkmus runs down mm -hmm. the aisle? Uh, well, I figured if he can do it, I can do mm -hmm. it. So <laughs> <laughs> I started running down to go introduce him and my shoes were flopping off. And I was going, what's up with that? And I said, I must have lost weight in my shoes, you know, in my feet. Uh -huh. And uh, come to find out, I looked down and I realized it was the bunion. It just melted away and that I didn't need the bigger size shoes anymore. So it was very interesting. Now, when you decided to do this, and the results are amazing. You just can't argue with success, can you? Uh -huh. What, what was the first thing you did? Did you, did you go through your kitchen and get rid of all the bad stuff? Um, yes, we uh, donated it to the church pantry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make other people sick. Uh, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's still being a good steward of your money. Mm -hmm. So we, we donated it, and then we just started to f try to figure out how to do this. And it was difficult. You know, I was going to say, is that is huge. We were the only ones in this area doing it, so we didn't have any support. Uh, everybody thought we were kind of crazy. Um, but then what we did is at seven months, we went up to North Carolina, got trained as health ministers. At nine months, we started a, a free support group in this area in Brandon. And we've been running that now for 10 years. And we average anywhere from 50 to 100 people. And then, um, then for two years, we listened to people. They would come and say, I really want to do your diet. I really want to do your lifestyle, but I don't but, know how to do it. Well, can I come home and live with you? And we would both look at each other and go, how absurd. <laughs> <laughs> and then God just opened the doors. And we it's a long story, but he opened every impossible door for us to buy that property. And it's just it's a miracle. Yes. And we have helped hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, we've also had 22 salvations there. So we start mm -hmm. each morning with devotion. And it's just a wonderful, safe place for people to come and learn how to take better care of their temple. What do you, what do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> we start off our day with the carrot juice and a barley mix. Just like Reverend Malcolm. Right. Does that stick to your ribs? I mean, how, how, how long till you get to eat a well, bagel? <laughs> I'll tell you, it, it sticks to you longer than, than uh, your, your conventional food. Uh, I was always the type when I was working that I'd get up at 5 o'clock in the morning so I could stop for a big break, break, mm -hmm. breakfast, bacon and eggs and toast and coffee and the whole thing, you know. And I'd be to work for 7, 8, 30, 9 to 9 o'clock, I was starving. Couldn't wait for that little rat wagon to come around, mm -hmm. you know, and grab a couple of hot dogs. And, mm -hmm. and <laughs> then by 12 again, I was starving again. It doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, he mentioned Barley Max, uh, which go to that website and you can... Uh, 
I have some. I take that. Yeah. And Good. some people think it's really gross. I can do it. I can handle it, but not everybody can. It doesn't I taste like real it. good. I guess you get used to it. And yeah. then the carrot juice, I, I juice, mm -hmm. I do that, and uh, that makes you feel a lot better. So then, okay, what do we do for lunch? Usually, um, we do our uh, bigger meal at lunchtime. If, if people are home, it's better for you because it takes longer to digest the cooked food. So mm -hmm. we will do some form of cooked. It could be a chili and a salad of some kind. Uh, at the center, in one week's time, we only serve one tossed salad, what most people think of as a tossed salad. Mm -hmm. But we do many different kinds of salads. It might be an avocado tomato salad. It might be a pyramid of um, different chopped up vegetables mm -hmm. with a dream dressing. or You know, we do many different things with the raw foods. Um, supper time, or, or for lunch, it might be uh, chili, it might be pizza. I do a raw form mm -hmm. of pizza, I do a cooked one. Uh, at supper time, we do t one or two raw things. But see, it's it's not just cut up lettuce. It's variety. It's, mm -hmm. If you look on our website, you'll see, a, um, if you go into the recipe section, you'll see many different examples of what we're eating. And people are really pretty impressed with that when they come, and, and they enjoy it. They, they sit there, and uh, one lady that we can remember came through, and she said, why would you want to pay all that money to go someplace to be deprived? And so every meal, she would pick up her fork and she'd go, I'm so deprived. <laughs> and, you know, she was just so happy with the food. Now, how long was it before you began to lose these MS um, symptoms? Mine was seven months before I lost the MS symptoms. We've seen other, other people within a couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on your toxicity level. Um, Oh, was it, what was interesting is I almost right away lost the arthritis that I had had, had since my mid-30s. Okay, I'd go to the doctor and he'd, he'd say, um, you know, with the symptoms, and I'd say, why am I getting this so young? Well, Dave, you're getting older. You have to expect mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, so, that's a wonderful word, anyways, isn't it? And they get out the white pad. <laughs> and then, uh, but I'll tell you, after going on the diet, uh, within a couple of months, I'm, uh, I'm totally free of it. What's your doctor think? Mm -hmm. They, they don't accept it. No, they no. They don't know why, but right. it wasn't that reason. Yeah, right. just, just keep doing what you've been doing. And, right. Yeah. Talking to David and Sherry Orcutt, and they have a Hallelujah <clears throat> Acres Lifestyle Center in Plant City, Florida. Uh, Dr. George Malcolmus has been on our program many times, mm -hmm. and this is an affiliation of his, and this is the way the Lord is using this health ministry just uh, really around the world. And so uh, if you want to go to that website or if you want to order the book by Dr. Malcolm is called Why Christians Get Sick, uh, you can order that from us. And the number for your credit card orders is 1-800-229-0059 or write to us at Homekeepers, Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. And when you order them from this program, we want to include information from these good people here, from the Orcuts, and uh, perhaps a lot of you uh, are in the uh, Central Florida area, and you would find it beneficial to visit this Lifestyle Center. So we will be sending you this. It's got a brief testimony of uh, their own experience, and uh, also a brochure more about the Lifestyle Center. You know, if you have serious health problems, you probably ought to think about this uh, because the track record is just pretty impressive. It, it is. is. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Now, tell me about some of the people who have come to you. How long have you had this ministry open? The ministry's 10 years old. Uh, the Lifestyle Center is 7 years old. Mm -hmm. yes. So you, you've got a little bit of a vantage point. Yes. And uh, we've had many different testimonies. There's one lady that comes to mind that had the same cancer as Farrah Fawcett at the same time. Mm -hmm. And Farrah, you know, went around the world and, yeah. and got a lot of treatments and everything. And this lady came to us. Uh, we told her the two most important things was to alkalize her body and oxygenate her body. And um, So how do you do that? Um, oxygenate you can do with a lot of exercise. Uh, you can also go into those ex oxygen chambers. Uh, like a hyperbaric? Did, right, mm -hmm. and she did some of that. Um, she worked with a doctor up in North Carolina, and I do believe it's the same doctor Reverend Malcolmus uses. 
and um, she did the program 100%. She is a health minister today, just like, as Dave and I are, and um, today she is cancer free. And now, now Farah had anal cancer, I same believe. Same thing. Was yes. hers rather advanced? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and I think her uh, testimony is on our website. We had a pastor come from Sustar Ministries out in Arizona, and uh, hit the son is the one that, that had multiple sclerosis. He heard about David's testimony, and he came through our center, and his MS was reversed in four months. So again, it depends on the toxicity. It depends on the living foods that we're putting into the body. And that's what we're trying to teach people is that the living body needs living food. You know, life begets life. Mm. Oh, ex exactly. Right. Um, <laughs> I heard it put this way once that if it has a mouth, don't eat it. <laughs> don't eat it. Yeah. Don't eat it. Um, it's interesting that in the scripture, uh, that subject of food came up, you know, in the 29th verse of the mm -hmm. first of the first chapter. And I've talked to Dr. Malcolmus about the fact that there's no question that God permitted meat exactly. That's right. at all, and Jesus fried fish and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Uh, what do you say to people who bring that up? I tell people this is not a theological issue. I've had many pastors call us and kind of talk to me for a whole hour about this. Mm -hmm. And I tell them it's not a theological issue. It's, it's a matter of that man is kind of destroying what God gave us mm -hmm. that was intended for good. So um, less is better. Uh, we tell people that it's, it's a good idea to start eliminating some of the things that are harmful or substituting better um, items of food into their lifestyle and diet. Um, but people are, they're so frightened by taking a lot of change into their life. Um, you but you to, did it cold turkey, right? We did yes. it cold turkey. Right. How many do it that way, do you think? Is there people a percentage? That are, people that are really sick tend to go full into mm -hmm. it right. um, because they're, they're frightened and they're filled with fear. Um, I, to be honest with you, when we got the diagnosis, um, and he made that comment in the hospital, uh, I was frightened enough that I didn't want to lose my husband. So I was willing to do anything. And I mm -hmm. really told the Lord, if there's anything I can do that will help my husband, if you tell me what it is, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Well, when the Hallelujah Lifestyle <laughs> came our way, I went, God, are you sure this is the wisdom I prayed for? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no meat there. It's, it's severe. <laughs> yeah, and, but you know, after you do this for a period of time and you start to realize that the food that we eat is really good and people enjoy it. Well, um, it, it's like any change. It is. It uh, <laughs> might be difficult, but then it becomes routine. This mm -hmm. is total routine. Yeah. Sad thing is when you go in a big grocery store and and the grocery stores, you know, thank God they do it, that, but they have a motor cart for some people. Yeah. That's right. And usually they're, they're very overweight, which tells you their knees won't support them. That's right. But honestly, sometimes I look to see what's in their basket. That's right. And usually it's full of snack foods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Snack foods and a lot of processed food, and uh, you don't see the fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're just trying to educate people on uh, eating more of that. Even if they can't do this 100%, you start where you're at, and, and then you start to progress to eating healthier. And we do classes at yeah, the center. I know one thing that you just tip your hat to your body for a couple of days. It responds. It God does. God made it. It's such a, we've only got a few seconds less, left, but do you do organic stuff? Yes, yes, we eat about a 98% How do you organic. know? How do you, can you trust the grocery store that it's really organic? The, um, we've had several people come through our program that that's what they do is they are uh, organic uh, inspectors. They go around from farm to farm to make sure that each farmer is doing what they're supposed to do. Where do you get yours? The grocery Inter store? Publix, uh, the local grocery store. And you, so. you, you trust them? Yes. In we fact, also I was talking to the produce manager one day and he told me, that when they chuck in the organic food, it always has to be put on the top. So right. nothing leaks, leaks on that from the non-organic. And even mm -hmm. when they store it in their, their coolers, it has to be on top. Right. 
Well, I, I know that, uh, you know, people really make a big deal out of that, but um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a lot more expensive, and I would just like to be sure that that's what we're really getting. Exactly. Well, yeah. we have to put a certain amount of trust there, but, you know, the, um, it, it's our life, lifeline. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, this has been very, very educational, but um, we are out of time, so stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Oh, I'm telling you, I could talk to those people all day long. And um, I know it's been informative for you, and I'm thankful for that. Let me again tell you, we're offering the book, Why Christians Get Sick, by Dr. George Malcolmus, and you'll find that small book full of information. Uh, the information is on your screen right now. If you use a credit card, use the 800 number. Otherwise, uh, write to me, and we will get it out to you. And I will again remind you that the information from my guests today will be included included in that with their uh, testimonies and information about the uh, center that they have. I am so thankful that um, the Lord speaks to us and his word is full of such detail. I mean it, I don't know what in the world he left out. And whether it's your relationships, your relationship with him, how to be a good parent, how to be a provider, how to have the very best in life. And it is in there, a lot about food and a lot about your being healthy. But I'll never forget what uh, Oswald Chambers said. God will do what only he can do. He will not do what we can do. So you better think about what you're doing to your body. Don't blame God for it. And hey, I'm out of time. Join me next time. No higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.